Welcome to the CNC programming training. We're going to do NC programming. Before we get started with NC programming, some of you may not be familiar at all with what a NC programmer does. So there's two phases really. There's a NC programmer that programs the machine and then there's a CNC machinist that will actually run the machine. At every college we teach the precision machining course which is actually loading material into the CNC programmer or into the CNC machine and running the G codes. So you might not be familiar with some of these terms but uh, I want you to get familiar with some of this yourself. This is a shot of a CNC machine. There's tons of them. What I want you to do is go Google that. Look up the CNC machines and see what they look like, kind of get orientated with what they are. So this is the CNC machines that we load material, typically aluminum, and we remove material using cutters and drills. We drill holes, we do pocketing, we do periphery cuts, and uh, that's what our first demos are going to be for this course. <clears throat> I would like you to also search Wikipedia, find out what an NC programmer does or what NC control means and uh, read through that. <clears throat> the typical job description for an NC programmer you can go do a search for jobs uh, you can also pause this video and just read through that so I want you to kind of find out what job descriptions an NC programmer would have so to get more orientated with how this works. I want you to watch this video, the CNC machines, how it works. It's also linked in the Canvas webpage and then also an introduction to programming. So the, what we're going to do is the programming portion of it. Uh, to run some simulations of what it would look like, we're going to drill some holes here in this part. Okay, so I've already created the toolpath and we're going to teach you how to do the toolpath to drill the holes. I'm under this simulation and we're going to compute and check that toolpath so I click on this and uh, I've already got it active so I'm going to go ahead and hit play and it went kind of fast so one of the things I can do is go into my settings sometimes this bar is too far over so you got to move that bar I'm on the bottom of the screen I hope you're seeing that to find that settings button there's a bar in the settings that will allow me to slow that speed down I'm, I'm gonna slow it down as slow as it can possibly go you would think it say okay apply or something but you just minimize that screen and I'll hit that play button again so we're gonna learn how to create a toolpath to drill out some holes and we're also gonna do some Oh no, the system just crashed. So I'll have to log in and log back off, or log, pull this up. Damn it. Okay, I got through simulating the drilling of the holes. This one here has a pocket. It looks like the rough stock is in my way. I'm going to open up this and look for the rough stock. I'm just going to hide that for a sec. Oh, I can't do that. Okay, it looks like it's okay now. I'm going to go ahead and try and compute this. find pocket on the list oh dang it
Let's try and double click pocket here. Why? Okay, maybe it was just slow getting up. Uh, I'm not going to do a simulate. I'm just going to go ahead and run from here. And I'm on the bottom of this window here. I'm going to try and simulate it from here. Awful slow coming up. I'm going to hit play. And what we're doing is we're watching it work from the inside out. So dropping down pockets and we're removing material. I was really hoping to, I hope I don't crash this. I think I'm going to run my other simulation just in case this thing wants to crash. But I did want to show you making pockets with square edges. It's very difficult for this to do. Okay, and what's going to happen is it's going to cause a perpendicular change, 90 degree change. And when we do that, it creates a slight chatter and it will burr into the machine, uh, to the part. So you don't want to do that. You want to have nice, smooth transitions. So you may hear terms of the engineering part must be adjacent and tangent, which is all great. That's, that is needed, but the tool path itself has to be tangent. So anytime I'm cutting in material, if the radius is too small or if there is no radius, I'll wind up making a tool path with 90 degree turns. You will not get straight edges because this, uh, whatever the cutter radius is, is going to be what that radius is going to be left on the end. So if it's not needed to be a perfect square or 90 degrees in there, I would highly recommend getting in radius values so I can machine that out. Otherwise, that process becomes a lot more expensive and difficult. So I'm going to try and run that in the shade environment, but I'm so afraid of it crashing again. I'm going to come over here and see if I can pick this profile cut. So let's double click on this and try and simulate that. So one of the most common things is cutting out the periphery of this. And uh, down here again, I'll run the program. So this is your toolpath. I can click on that. And you'll see there's the path itself in the green. I'll hit play. Okay. Again, I can expand this window so I can see the settings. Slow this down a bit. And hit play. I can turn this off. So what we're watching here is just a simple cut coming around the outside edges. Okay, and that defines the outside periphery of it. Now, what's kind of neat to watch is, oh shoot, how do I, I'm trying to activate this. Oh, we gotta turn off, we gotta get out of the simulation that we're in right now. Say okay to that. So I verified it. If I want to simulate it with material, we should be able to activate this. And then I should be able to hit play, but for some reason it's oh it's actually working. Sometimes that doesn't work for me. So with that active, you can hit play with this shade mode on here. Enable the material. I can hit play. And you can see it's cutting through the part. Ah, oh, shoot, it crashed on me, so uh, that's okay. When we go through the periphery cut, we'll show you how to make sure that we get the cut all the way through the material. Uh, if you work just to the bottom, I might not have enough of the cutter going through. So typically you go like an eighth of an inch or 0625 past the material or whatever that radius value is. you got to go further than the radius on the end mill. I'll go back and try... Oh no, I just crashed it again. I can't believe I did that. We'll have to, I'll pause the video and try and pull up the computer. All right, I'm sure it's giving some of my students great joy to watch me keep crashing the system here. 
I'm just doing that to make you guys feel better so that you don't feel like you're alone with the system crashing on you. All right, uh, I'm going to try and simulate again. I'm going to activate this one here to enable that material to be sh shown when I verify it. Okay, I'm going to do the pocketing and I'm going to hit the play button. So I hit pocketing in the tree and I hit the play button. And I hope for a miracle. Oh, great. Now it's just doing that whole thing where it's spinning around. So let's try this. Let's double click pocket command. And I'll hit play. And I should get the. Oh, boy, that makes me nervous. Okay, we'll hit the play button here. You can see it's got the raw material. The part that you saw had square edges, but there's no way it's going to do the square edges with the uh, cutter being round. So those are the results you're going to get. Um, but those are the concepts that we're trying to learn. If you're just in the, the engineering program wondering, well, why do we have to learn NC programming? We're making parts for the machinists. So... When I was in design, I always liked to test to see if I could do the simple stuff. Um, to see if we can do the periphery cuts, pocketing, drilling the holes. I knew if I could run it, that they could run it. They can figure out how to control the feeds and speeds, what size cutters and all that. You really don't even need to change a cutter. I just need to see if the tool path works. But in the NC programming course, the manufacturing 107 and 109, We'll go more in depth about what kind of cutters to use and how to set all that up. Um, main thing here is that I want you to know what an NC programmer does, what a CNC machinist does. So when you go out into production, if you're working with machine parts, you'll have an idea of what a machinist is doing and what can be machined and what can't be machined. So that's the intent of this section of the NC programming. We're going to do, to start this class, the periphery cuts, the pocketing, and the drilling of the holes. Um, I forgot. Just in case you forgot, you can reset this. And then uh, there's no OK button or nothing. You just hit play. And you can watch that thing getting uh, cut out. So again, we're going to do this pocketing, we're going to do the drilling, we're going to do periphery cuts, and we're going to do facing, which I haven't shown, but those are the primary functions I want you to learn after uh, completing this course. All right, I think you'll find it works pretty easy when it's not crashing, and uh, it's kind of fun to do, and I can't wait to watch what kind of parts you're going to make and apply all of these. Uh, the only thing I haven't shown also is how to run multiple uh, processes at the same time. So we're going to create a part that will have holes, pockets, periphery cut, all being done in one shot. Uh, what happens there is you got a tool change. So the cutter goes back to the home position, exchanges whatever cutter it's using, and then uh, does the next cut. Sometimes you have to have another process, like I might be doing something on the bottom of this. So I'd have to pull the aluminum out, reset it, lock it back into place, and then machine the bottom of it. And that would be an entirely different process. So up here in the tree, you'll see we're in uh, program number one. You'd have to create a, another program to do something like that. All right, that's the general info on the NC programming stuff. So let's go have some fun and do it.